Here to discuss about decision tree. In this short video, I will tell you how does the decision tree works uh, with help of R programming language. Let us have a recap about previous video where we discuss about data science. We discussed that data science has got four main pillars. One is programming, second is the statistics, third is machine learning, and fourth is business application. So that today's topic belongs to the third part of data science and the supervised learning. And the machine learning, there are two areas, supervised and unsupervised learning. Under unsupervised learning, this decision tree belongs. So the discussion topic for today is what does it mean by decision tree supervised learning? Let us move forward. Uh, let us discuss how do people make decision to uh, for a job change. Mostly people will decide are they satisfied with the job or no. If they are satisfied, they will go this way. No, then they will go this way. If they are satisfied, are they are they getting a good salary? If yes then don't ch change a job, if no, change the job. So this is how based on the multiple decisions and multiple factors, people decide to change their job. We will use this kind of human understanding to generate a machine learning algorithm and we will make the machine take decisions based on the same way as, a, as human beings do. So let us move forward. Uh, we will have a recap of machine learning process flow. In machine learning, there are three parts. The first is first discuss the algorithm and then perform the machine learning and finally verify the algorithm. We will follow this, this, these steps. So next we will discuss about the algorithm which we are going to follow in making of this, this, this decision tree. The algorithm here is make a split with most homogeneous distribution of the predictor. So let us say my prediction is about job change. So I will carefully decide what will be the first factor on which I will make the make the uh, make up my mind, and then I will then I will add the next factor and then the next factor. So while deciding about the factor, I will take care of most homogeneous distribution. Let us go further, and we will get the training data. As discussed earlier, in case of super supervised learning, we have a separate set of training data on which we will build the model and then we, we can do the prediction. So here what you can see, I am reading a CSV file which has been stored here and whole of the CSV file goes to the variable called train1. So this CSV file is open here. So this training HR100 file is available here. We are focusing on this column job change. So these, these are the statistics of the people based on the several factors they have decided for a job change. Job change is equal to zero means no job change. Job change is equal to one means this uh, means true. They will change, they have changed their job. So we have this statistics, satisfaction level 0.98, last evaluation, uh, number of projects they worked, average monthly hours they spent, time spent in, uh, spent in the company, and a salary, which department they are, is their salary medium, low or high. So what we see here, there are several factors based on which people decide for a job change. So here in this sheet, I have got more than one, one million records. So I will take this 1 million as an input and based on that, I will do the machine learning. So with this command, I am able to load the data uh, in my programming tool. Let us move forward. Once the training data is available, the next step will be get the testing data. Testing data is there in this test underscore hr100.csv file. Let us have a look on this. Yeah, this is my testing data. So there's a record of only one person. I my idea is based on my learning data, I wanted to predict whether this person is going to leave his job or not. 
So the last sheet which we have seen was about the training data. And now what we are seeing is testing data. I want to test my machine learning for this person who has got this criteria. And I wanted to find out whether this person is going to change his job or not. So with this command, I can load the testing data in my programming tool. And once both data is loaded, what I can do? I can use this command, R part left or job change. And then we can start working on this. Till now, what we have discussed uh, that we can, we have loaded the test data and the training data, and then I am going to analyze this this uh, factor job change based on my training one data. So I am going to analyze as uh, this factor job change one. So this is the sign which shows that I wanted to correlate job change with the rest of the other factors. Dot means rest of the column. So this way I, way I will create a variable called tree one. This is then tree one, which have all the learning from the records in training one. And then I will move to the next step. Predict one, use the predict function with help of the tree which we have just built. Use the test data and apply this learning and do the prediction. So this is how in the four steps, we can perform whole of the machine learning. First, load the training data, then load the testing data, then create the decision tree, and finally, do the prediction. So let us work it out. Yes. So this is how I, how I am going to read my training data. My training data is here. Now I am going to read my testing data. So my testing data has been loaded. Once the training and testing data is here, I can check how many columns and rows are here. So, n row of training one. Oh, I can see here I have got around 10,000 rows. And then the next is I will check how many rows are there in testing. We have got just one row. So based on this number of rows, I am going to do the prediction. So the next is build this tree. So I am going, I am going to perform this third step after checking the number of rows. So this, this step is very important step. Now my decision tree has been built. And finally, I am able to do the prediction. Now the things will come into a variable called PRED1, prediction 1. So based on this, this decision tree, prediction has been made. So let us see what is the prediction. Will this employee going to leave the company or is he going to stay in the company? So it says job change is equal to zero. It means job change decision is false. This person is going to stay in the company. This is how in the four steps I have done the machine learning and I am able to predict the thing. At this point of time, you might be wondering that internally, how did uh, the system perform this task? So there is a complex system inside this which has built the decision tree. However, this complex process can be very well represented in the graphical form. So the next step which I, which I am going to take is to print the graph of the decision tree, which clearly shows how the decision was made. Yes, now I am going to print the graphical report of this tree. What you can see, a decision tree has been made and this is how the decisions are made in this algorithm. Let us check. Yeah. Yeah, we can see here, the first cut is made on satisfaction level, then time is spent in the company, last evaluation and like this. For example, if we check out, check our data here, for this person, his satisfaction level is 0.87. So here the satisfaction level greater than 0.8, 0.48, so it goes here. Then it checks on the last evaluation, then average monthly salary, and finally it comes down here. 
So this is how in the multiple steps. You can check that, check it separately. This is how on the multiple steps this person has decided to stay with the company. This is how I wanted to uh, describe what does it mean by machine learning. Thank you for your attention. I'm sure you enjoyed learning from this video. Please like the video and if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment us in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more such informative videos. Do look out for other related videos in our playlist. For more information, visit our website now. Keep learning with IntelliPath.